was vindication delayed. DNA set Stephen Avery free 18 years after a jury convicted him of raping a Manitowoc woman. Some days I'm happy to be back. Some days I ain't. You know. Sometimes it hurts too much. Everything's all different in 18 years. As Avery struggled, so did the woman who sent him away. I am the woman who sat in court and pointed to Mr. Avery and said, this is the individual who assaulted me. In the months that followed, 12 News investigated the botched investigation that upended both their lives. Newly released police records show the sheriff's department was fully aware it had a far more likely suspect in its midst. Gregory Allen was a known flasher and peeping Tom. He'd already been arrested for another attempted sexual assault on the very same beach. It was a cover up. Avery believed the sheriff's department ignored Gregory Allen because of a grudge against him. The Department of Justice investigated, found mistakes, but no crime. The report says Manitowoc police, the victim herself, deputies within the sheriff's department, as well as employees in the district attorney's office, all asked the sheriff to look more closely at Allen. Critics called it a whitewash. If somebody wants to take this factual report and impute poor motive or some sort of uh, mentality or something on any individual in this case, I think that's just plain wrong and I think it's political. A decade later, Peg Lautenschlager says making a murderer hasn't changed her mind. She tells 12 News the real perpetrator looked very much like Avery. DNA was not available at that time. Research on the problems with witness identification was not available at that time. Oh, God. Avery was wrongly convicted, but not wrongly suspected. I was young and stupid, hanging around with the wrong people. Avery was 23, the married father of four. He was unemployed after dropping out of special education classes in high school. He was also a convicted felon. I really ain't got my time, my record. The filmmakers let Avery describe his prior run-ins with the law. We were fooling around with the cat. I tossed him over the fire and he went up to me. The documentary offers a sympathetic explanation. Court records describe torture. On a dare, Avery doused the family cat with oil and gasoline and threw it into a bonfire. When it crawled out, Avery threw it back. Avery also did time for felony burglary, and months before his wrongful arrest, Avery's cousin accused him of lewd behavior. But he did come out in front of my car and he was... One morning, Avery rammed his car into hers, jumped out, put a gun to her head, and ordered her into his car. She got away. I ran my cousin off the road. She was married to a Manitowoc Sheriff's deputy. Avery pleaded insanity. Before that case closed, Avery was locked up for the rape he didn't commit. 18 years later, 12 News was there when his accuser and Avery asked legislators in Madison to fix the system that betrayed them both. The day they made their peace. She said she was sorry, so that was a start. But her meeting with Avery offered an ominous observation. He commented about how there's some days when he feels it would be easier to be back in prison. Attorney General Peg Lautenschlager declined to talk on camera, but she told 12 News she's been getting threats since making a murderer choice. Many people are angry about everything. All right, well, tomorrow night you'll be talking about Teresa Hallbach's disappearance. Yeah, the movie suggests investigators had tunnel vision and that Avery was their only suspect. Tomorrow night at 10, we'll tell you what you didn't see and who else they narrowed in on. And on Friday night, we'll be doing a half-hour special, Stephen Avery, Inside the Case Files. It starts at 6.30.